suffer from our underdogs The ones willing to pay the cost Even when we're up, we gotta take a loss Underdogs are always against the odds I'ma use this opportunity to do it for my underdogs I'ma do this for my underdogs I'ma do this for my underdogs I'ma do this for my underdogs Yeah, my underdogs Welcome back to the Rec Center Podcast. I'm Kenny Edwards, joined here with my co-host, Lorenzo Parham. Lo, we making history today. This history, man, <laughs> history. Ken, first let me shout out DeAndre Pertee for last um, last week's interview. Shout out Coach DeAndre Pertee. Great interview, doing a great job over at Skyline, trying to build their basketball program up, man. But Ken, I had to wear my Arizona State hat first. And for I, most, know, I, had to I already air, know. I had to put the Arizona State on, right? <laughs> um, we got a couple of Trojans in the house, man. So I had to put my Arizona State hat on. But <laughs> this, is our, this is the first his, this history. This is track history. So when we said let's do a track episode, I said let's do these both at the same time, right? So yeah. we could dive into it, all of these things, man. Hey, because not only is they great, I know them through track, but we all met. I met Dre before Bret Hart, but we all met at Bret Hart. So when we talk about history in the school that got the best athletes, Ken, Bret Hart might do it. Because we got to add track into that as well. Dang. And Bret Hart might take the cake over that, Ken. I'm a big Bret Hart <laughs> fan, so. Because if you look it. at Bret Hart, we got one All-American, two NCAA All-Americans right here. And I'm the third one, Ken. So hey. yes, we, we might got we might got the hands down on that, right? I can't Bret Hart, think of man. another junior high but, can say all that. Let's welcome Andre Amis and Natasha Sawyer to the podcast. I know her as Natasha Neal, but Natasha Sawyer to the podcast. How y'all doing? What's happening? What's happening? Glad to be here. Hey man, we, yeah. we glad to have y'all. We glad to have y'all, man, because I know y'all story, but don't fully know y'all story, right? And we want to just dive into a different audience, too, and bring attract people on, man, to tell their story. Because I tell people all the time, I didn't know what kind of athlete I was until I started running track. Because <laughs> the first day <laughs> of my ever running track, it was like a 600 breakdown, 600, 500, 300. Time, dude, I to quit this track. <laughs> I didn't say for this, right? So, so I'm going to start with Tasha, man, because I remember her running a little younger um, than you did, Dre. Tasha, what got you started in the track? So, you know, neighborhood racist, um, you know, I was like seven or eight beating my, beating my boy cousins and racist. Um, and my grandmother, she, she saw me running, racing my cousin outside. Um, and she, I had another cousin who was on 3M. And so she just connected that and it was, you know, it was on from that, from that point. So you started at eight years old? Yes, yes. Eight all the way until, eight all the way until now, because I be seeing your training videos, <laughs> like, hey, she might can run a 400 right now, right? Uh, so that's a long time to be dedicated in, in, in a sport, which I tell you all the time, track is a life lifelong sport, right? It ain't, it ain't a dibble in and dibble out sport. It's a lifelong sport because the moment you feel you can take a year off, it's a whole different crop of runners coming in, and, and, and it was and it's history, right? So it's definitely a lifelong sport. Hey, Dre, you started off being hoop legend, Laurel Elementary School, Bret Hart Junior High School. Please be balling. <laughs> balling, right? You started off hooping and stuff, right? And I'm going to be honest, on a hoop court, we couldn't tell you was that fast, right? How did you know that you was able to go from being good in basketball to being super fast and track and going out for the track team? Man, so this is what happened, right? I knew I had some speed, but I didn't know how fast I was either. And then uh, we was at the school and two Bob was like the dude, right? Bean was like, Bean wouldn't let me run at first. Bean wouldn't let me run. And then I was like, he said, you could be, you could be two Bob, I'll let you run. I said, let's go. And the whole school came down. <laughs> And we raced at the school. First race, I beat two by. Two by was hella mad, y'all. Two by, <laughs> two by said, "No, nah, I'm gonna take my shoes off." So then Curtis, being everybody started betting. Beat Bob again. Bob got mad. Bob took his shirt off. We're going again. <laughs> it's like 
I was like, the first two was kind of easy. Let's go again. So, oh. <laughs> the next time, I gave it to Bob. And the third one, I was warmed up. I gave it to Bob. Then, man, that's when me and Bob became hella friends, like hella cool after that because he was like, <laughs> we was always cool, but we became hella cool after that. But uh, that's when I knew I had really good speed because I had never really raced anybody, like, ever. Like, you know, we like low set, we was playing basketball. I didn't, I didn't know um, how fast I was going to be. Uh, so, yeah, that was my first introduction to, like, knowing that I could run a little bit. Hey, so here's the thing. You come and beat two Bob and Beam, y'all pull over, you got carried it, and y'all go to the track. Did Beam ever be like, yo, I kind of need a receiver on football too with that kind of speed? Did Beam try to get you to play football too? Nah, because, yeah, I remember, man, this was my senior year of high school. And when this happened, this was like football season was already over. Oh, got wait, it. wait, wait, wait. You didn't start running till your senior year? To my senior year of high school. Wow. 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 Hold on. Before we dive into that senior year of high school stuff, let me go back to, to Tasha because she was doing the youth youth track with 3M, right? Hey, I'm a, I'm a real huge fan of 3M and Coach Pittman, right, Tasha? Tell me yes. some of the things at eight years old Coach Pittman was instilling you to keep going with track. What were some of the things he was telling oh you? Oh, my gosh. So anybody that knows Mr. Pittman, he is um, about discipline, right? You need to – he he will – he holds the parents accountable, right, and the kids. Like, he give it to you straight of what his expectations are. You are to be at practice right? It's, it's, it needs to be a good reason why you didn't make practice. Even as a kid, you know, it's like it, he took it really seriously. Um, he was about um, how you presented yourself. You need to look neat, right? Um, he, and he And it was hard. Our practices were hard. So, I mean, I think I look at it as a blessing that I started in that program because hard work was just something that I that I was instilled in me from Mr. Pittman's program. It wasn't, you know, I never had to go into another program and be surprised by hard work because it was just, that was in my foundation. So um, that's, that's his, you know, Mr. Pittman was a police officer with the, with the city of Berkeley. Like um, that, I mean, like when you think of, when you think of that discipline, I mean, he, we knew he didn't play. You know, we would have our track meets. When we came back on Monday, he would have a list of who did what, like who was running around at the track meet. You know, you're supposed to be sitting in the stands, disciplined, uh, focused on your race, or what you got coming up. Who was running around? Who came with their hair looking a mess? Who came and didn't have a track shoes? You know, all of that little stuff that you, you know, now, now I'm, coaching teenagers and stuff that they don't know right so he he just he talks hey, so much just can I in tell life you something? can i tell you something 30 years later we talking about when you was eight years old 30 years later now right not saying you're that old 30 years later now <laughs> coach Pittman still do the same thing he still do his monday wall of shame you call it the wall of shame he get his yes. paper out and still do the same thing. That just <laughs> talks about consistency within the program, man, because he don't change. Hey, I ain't going to lie. As a parent, Coach Pittman had my whole house scared of him on track morning, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. we gotta be on. Hey, let me tell you, my family ain't never to nothing on time except <laughs> Coach Pittman tracked me. Listen, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Coach Pittman had us, had a, I'm like, come on, Coach, man, you kind of like what you're talking about. My girl, I'm the only person to be able to have that type of authority in my my household, right? He, he yes. all, all the way. Shout out to Coach oh, Pittman. Man. Hey, what what year did you? What age was it when you first got your wow? Track is a big sport. I'm going to the Junior Olympics, and the competition is fierce oh, when we leave um, out of the Bay Area. What year was that for you? Oh my gosh! So I'm terrible with dates and stuff, but I remember going to um, Florida Junior Olympics in Florida, um, and. Coach Pittman, Mr. Casey, they weren't able to go. That was the first year that I, like, I won, I think, or I placed. Um, before that, I didn't really know how good I was. You know, I hadn't been winning everything um, up until that point. Um, and it, uh, it, it just put something in me because every year 
before that, I would every summer, you know, that hard work, I'd be like, I'm not going back next year. I'm not going back. And that's some hard work. So that was the first season where I really was like, oh, OK, I can actually, you know, I can actually uh, compete with these kids who are um, top in the nation. So that was the first year. I think I probably was like maybe 11. I probably was like 11 years old when mm. I first realized that. I could compete um, on a national level. So, I don't know how you guys did it as kids during those track meets, because as a parent, I'm like, bro, I got here at 7.30 in the morning, <laughs> I leave at 5.30 and my child ran for two minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you know I, I, I was bad. I told my daughter, you can't run track no more. Hey, hey Ken, this, Ken, this, Ken, Ken, this when I realized you I was on my way. I took, took her out. out. I took her out. <laughs> hey, but guess what? Jay, Ken daughter gets trained by Jeff Lance. Jeff oh, really? Lance oh, wow. She can do that. That's an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. She could do that. And then we'll run in high school, but that youth track, uh-uh. Yeah, Jeff Lane trains his daughter for track. Um, yeah. Jeff, I'll be seeing him at the track myself at Piedmont when it was open. They used to be there. I'm trying to creep. Don't nobody know me. Then I see Ken, <laughs> Ken daughter him up there. <laughs> right. Hey, but so Dre, yeah. here's the question Dre when you so that first year you start your senior year that's amazing and it, it's crazy that different things brings us to the track right some people Tasha realized she was fast you want to challenge two Bob to a race it was the girls for me I was told that there's a lot of girls <laughs> in track and if you go run track you go see the girls right but Dre your first year stepping on the track um how did you do that year um OEL and um outside of that I I won like everything. I won. <laughs> I won. Humbly stay. Humbly stay. <laughs> what was your race? What, what was your race? And I, and race, I right? tell you, it, it, but it messed me up because I thought that like I couldn't lose. I was like, and I thought that I was gonna break the world record. I was like, every time I got on the track, I was setting a new time, a new best. But it was mainly because I had never ran before. So every time I ran, I was gonna keep running faster and faster. But you know, I won the OAL, which the OAL league is. We was kind of stacked that year, um, and only one person gets to go to the uh, yeah, to stay, to stay, right? So I want OALs. Uh, we didn't have 100, all around. 100, 200, or 400 as well. No, I didn't run the four. I I did run the four in high school too, but I only ran I only ran the four in high school twice, and the, my very first 400 meters, which I was in lane nine and I had to run against all the St. Mary's guys. I had to run against him, all those guys. Not my very first 400 and that 400 qualified me for nationals. So I didn't run another 400 until nationals. And then um, <laughs> I won the state meet in 200. And then I went to nationals and that's when I was feeling myself and I got my I got, I got everything handed to me, man. I, I tried to run the four, the two. I tried to double. Now it was a mistake. But, um, you know, I, I ended up being an All-American in the four at uh, and at Nationals. But, yeah, man, that, that first year was crazy. I had a lot of success. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm back. Hold on. I'm back. First year running. First year running. Um, OAL. You kill OAL, 100, 200. Four. You could have got the four if you trained. Tim Brown was good, but I think you would have got the four if you trained for it. I would have got Tim. I would have got, got Tim if you yes. trained for it, right? But I want to talk about winning that 200 at state <laughs> in your first year running, right? Ken, when you go to state, it's a loaded field, but 90% of the field is Southern California. Yeah, so we and I know Moses, they looking like, who is this dude? Where you come from? Everybody well, sure I'm pretty sure it's the same dudes. Yeah, same people. Yeah. Yeah, Long Beach. The yes. same, and that's with track. Track is a family sport, Ken, because you see yes. the same people right. every year. Yeah, you got it on your be. calendar who I'm going to run against. But that yeah. 200 field, who who was in that field with you? This Is this Sutan senior year, too? Man, or is this so, Sutan the year before? That was, no, that was Sutan year. It was so, it was it was that. You had Sutan, you had Kareem Kelly, you had uh, Miguel Fletcher. Um, Daryl uh, make it. Daryl make it. I don't know. I don't remember Daryl being in two hundred. I don't remember if he did. I know he was there. I don't know if he made the two hundred or not. I forget if he was there. I just remember that Kareem, Sutan, Miguel. Uh, I had that dude from Vacaville that was rolling. Uh, Hunter, and then um, my boy uh, uh, Jerome Avery was in that race too. Wow, that's a you'd be a Sutan. <laughs> 
Yeah. Hey, but so here's the thing, Ken. I only know these names because Football. my best friend. No, no, no! I knew uh, that. My best friend at the time, Lawrence Parks, was like a uh, Pizzo was like yeah, a, he's a a track a track groupie to some of these dudes, <laughs> man. We gonna be King Ring Kelly and this. Like, I'm, dude, who the fuck are you talking about? I don't even know these dudes. I play football, right? Uh, yeah. But the, what was it like when you won that? What, what was it like after you won that, man? And just seeing um, everything the doors opened up for you winning state? Because normally, when you win state and track, it's an automatic Division One scholarship, right? Because you're definitely going 20 point something and you win a state and beating them guys. But what was it like coming back to Skyline as a student in your first year winning it? I was dope, man, because, you know, you, it, it was one of those things where, like I wanted to prove something to everybody, right? Um, you know, there was different factors of why I even started running in the first place. Like one of the factors, like I remember my counselor was like, I swear, like, she told me like, uh, college ain't for everybody. You should go to culinary art school. And bro, I was like, I was like, I'm not an artist. <laughs> she started laughing. I was like, oh, you mean cooking? I was like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> hey. The thing was that, the thing like, so when you're an athlete, you got six period, you got to go to practice, right? But you got to be able to go to tutoring. Yeah, but only if you was an athlete, that last period could be like that. So that was like another motivation for me to start running so I can get that six period, that six period free. Um, so I could like get the tutoring and whatnot with the athletes. So that was a major motivation for me as well. And then coming back and be able to be like, yeah, I, you know, I showed you I could do this and being able to get these, um, go to college. But the thing I'm going to tell you, all that's funny. And me and Tasha was talking about this. I never got recruited from Cal or Stanford. Hmm. I we was, just talked about that yesterday. Yep. Yeah. She didn't get, you didn't get recruited either, right? Mm-mm. I didn't, well, Stanford is out the question for me, so let's not even <laughs> go to Stanford, but I never got recruited. I got some letters from Cal in football when I was in junior college, but for track, no, and I remember going to the Brutus Hamilton invitation at Cal and literally wanting to beat them, wanting to beat them. I remember they had a guy in my, <laughs> in one of my races, but his name was Ward. I can't think of Ward's first name, right? But the kid, and it was right after the year you finished, Dre. Right? After you finished running your senior year at um, Arizona State, I was at Cal the next meet. And I'm like, hey, it's a slow track. I hate the track. It's a really slow track. But all I want to do is beat the Cal dudes because I'm like, hey, I could have stayed home. Y'all yeah. came and got me, right? Um, but I wonder why they, maybe they don't recruit local track runners. I don't know. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. But my wife, her father was the AD at Cal at the time. My Mike, I'm gonna tell it all. Michael Sawyer, he's the he AD at the time. So the running joke when we go to family dinner is like, y'all let me go to SC. Y'all could have recruited me the whole time. But they, <laughs> <laughs> I come to family dinner with my whole SC jacket on. The whole house is Cal. His wife is a, a, a Cal professor. He was the AD at Cal. So I come to the house. I'm SC'd up. Thanksgiving dinner, we SC'd up. But <laughs> I just thought it was crazy, man, that to be from to be from the Bay Area, and I ne- I never got a recruitment letter, anything from them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was that was, and I mean, I got one from every single Pac-10, Pac-10 Pac- school at the time, except for those two. I was like, I feel like that was every sport. <laughs> I feel like that was at that was every sport back then. That they didn't recruit the right. they recruit the local kids. Mm. That might have been, yeah. Hey, but before we touch on you getting recruited by all these schools and not choosing Arizona State, because I'm thinking about if you was on that team with them <laughs> Arizona State guys, Tim Harden, and all of them dudes, then what it would have been like. But let me go back to Tasha real quick. So, Tosh, what made you choose after you run track um, for 3M? What made, how did you end up choosing to go to high school at Logan? Like, was it something where you out living out that area or was it like, hey, they go have a good track program? So, man, me and my dad was just talking about this. So, no, I was living, I was on 81st and Hillside. (laughs) I was still in Oakland. So, of course, I was um, in the district to go to Castlemont. Um, And my dad, we was just talking about this. He said, I had went and took the test at Odell, right? Because Curtis was at Odell. So, Mm -hmm. I had went to take the test at Bishop O'Dowd. And um, I was asking my dad the other day, why I didn't go to O'Dowd? He said, well, you told me you, you, uh, you, didn't, you didn't do the test accurately because you didn't want to go there. I was like, mm. really? I don't know why I didn't want to go to O'Dowd. 
but um but logan you know when i was when i went to logan they had um kelly had just graduated kelly white um they had carla estes Janae wright they just had a i mean a great program um and and some great coaches right so i don't even know what put them on my radar i don't remember how i got how they got on my radar um of course it was it was not an official transfer at first um but i got oh, in there know. i was oh we it know was, it wasn't listen it was Katie it was Burke, bart every union day city. my first my <laughs> first year i was on bart every day to union city um coming back you know on bart catching the bus home and then i got a car so it was a commute eventually it was an official transfer but yeah, they just had a great program. And at the time when I was, when I was, it wasn't really a great OAL program. The girl hurdlers, like it was, it just wasn't, none of the schools were dominating as far as track. And so, um, you know, Logan, I mean, they had everything from education to coaches to, a, to um, even a, we had a, we had an office there that was, you could go in it sets you up to prepare you for college, what college you want to go to, what classes you need to get registered for. You know, that was, I wasn't, that was something that I had never seen in, you know, being at Oakland school. So um, I was, I was super impressed. And I, I'm thinking of like, even so, like, so to beat you, Carla, y'all track team was phenomenal. I and mean, I remember some of them relays. And I remember coming to watch um, y'all. I think y'all rival at the time was like instant nail to be y'all biggest rivalry races. I tried to make it to them meets. Right. But uh -huh. Logan at the time was a star studded school altogether in sports. Right. Because we still talking, you get there, Jackie Crook's there. Antoine, yeah. I mean, uh, Roy Williams is there. Damian Mackey right. was there, right? Right. So um, is this thing like Logan at the time during them uh, mid, mid-90s mid um, just had everything you needed as an athlete? What was it like for you guys um, just walking to school with all of the read it, read it, read it shit in track in the Bay Area, <laughs> right? What was that like for you guys walking on campus with the rest of the football players who was also the shit at in the Bay Area? Oh, it was dead. Oh my gosh. So we, you know, we had our, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a click, but all the athletes, of course, hung out with each other. Right. But when you say walking around campus, like that campus, first of all, it's big, right. It's like a small college and right. the, the, um, the facilities, like we had a whole weight room, a whole training room, our training room at Logan, was better than our training room at SC when I was at SC. Training like, at SC was crap. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, well, it is SC. It is. All we had was a bench press and a squat rack. No, no, they talking about, no, not that training. You talking about the medical training room or the weight the room? The medical training room. Uh, the medical, the medical training, training room. room. Our medical our, training look, room was our hand coach. Our weight room might rival SC <laughs> when we was there, right? Well, now it's it's all done up and stuff. But yeah, when um just so at it Logan, was, you guys had a medical, like a met like STEM, like ice and STEM, and yes, yes, Damn. yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. that was, yes, yeah, so it makes it e makes it easy, right? <laughs> yeah, but Ed, mean, but Ed want to figure out can't figure out why we don't send our kids to Castlebox. We can say <laughs> medical training facilities, right? <laughs> hey, one of the hurdlers though during your time that was in the OEL, um, I think she won it your year too. Was it Ryan? Did Ryan win it with yep. you? Yeah. Yes, Ryan. Ryan. Like, shout out to Ryan. But Ryan was nowhere. I don't even know where Ryan came from. She was like a Dre. Maybe she was running. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe she blew up her junior year, the year I was supposed to win, and you know she took it. Um, but she wasn't oh, hold there. On, come on, come on. She beat you. She beat me my junior year. Oh, wow. I didn't know yep. that. Okay, I didn't know yep. that. What was that so, race like? Like, what was that race like for you guys? Like, did she come out of so nowhere? Me, like, No, no, no. So Ryan Peters and Davida uh, Shepard, they was, Shepherd. They was kind of like Davida my, Shepherd. they was my competition in my race, in my hurdle races, um, like my junior. So my sophomore year, I didn't run hurdles, right? Okay. So my freshman year, I was at Bret Hart. I finished my ninth grade year. My sophomore year, I didn't run hurdles. My foot was hurt. Then my junior year is where I was supposed to win state. 
I went in as the favorite in the 300 meter hurdles, hit the first hurdle, almost fell, came back up. That Mr. Casey, you will not stop. I don't care what, mm -hmm. right? So that's Mr. Casey is from 3M. 3M, right. For those of y'all that don't know, the hurdle coach for 3M. Didn't stop, wind up getting third. Like I hit the first hurdle, terrible, almost went mm. down. So, um, you know, it was, it was a, man, it was, it was, it was terrible for me. It was terrible, you know, losing that race. It was the, my first state meet at, with the hurdles and it was supposed to be mine, both the, you know, both races. And so, um, it was, it was tough, but I, I feel like I've, I might have needed that, you know, just to get mm. get hungry. Like, I mean, I went I went on from that from state, made the US team, was the national champion in the 400 meter hurdles. Um, you know, went and got a bronze medal for the US in Cuba. Like it was, it was, I still want that W, you know, but <laughs> it made me, it right. made me uh it made me just just hungry and um hungrier. I would say hungrier, but it was also a test to my character to see how I was going to, um, how I was going to take that. Cause I still had other races to, to do, you know, I had still had, um, a team dependent on me. So it was, it was, that was a good race. That was a good race. Hey, that, became, hey, that became your model, Tasha. Hitting the first. Tasha, man, we'd be in races. Tasha hit the first hurdle. We was at, at SC, we had a big race. Tasha hit the first hurdle, and I mean, she did a scorpion. Her face was on the ground. Her legs was in the air, and everybody's like, oh. And she got up, <laughs> and she started coming back. And you can hear the announcers on the, on the, you watching them on the TV. I'm like, I don't know if she has enough real estate to come back, but she's sure making it interesting. She kept coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. And that girl, I, I don't know if she got second or, or as the girl out to get the race, but it was the most electrifying race like ever. Like you see people come back in the four by four, but I ain't never seen nobody get up, fall in the hurdles and come back. <laughs> and get the race. Hey. I was like, man, this girl that, bad. That just sounded like a model for life, period. What That's you just what said. Was, it's the first hurdle. Get up, and just get keep up. coming back and keep man. coming back and keep coming back. We got to use that in our marketing thing when we talk to our young kids. Right? Hey, that's Marshawn. Hit him up in the face again. And again. again. <laughs> hey, but Dre, when you when so when you left Skyline, you went to San Francisco City first. Yeah, I went you, to City. I went to City. How, how was that? What made you end up at City with Coach Oyang? Like, you, did you get recruited to City because you still had Mayor, you still had these other JUCOs out here? How did you end up at City? You know what? I, I went to City because I wanted to take it serious, and um, I felt like I knew everybody as a merit, and it wasn't going to be um, for me. I just needed to get a, a change of environment, and Oyang was that mentor for me, like from the gate, like who was like, it's not, he talked to me about what happens after, after track, right? And like the importance of using track as a vehicle to get to the next level. And everybody else was just talking to me about running fast. And, you know, he put the importance of, of the education and what we had to do and making sure that um, you were going to have the tools you need to be successful on the next level. And, and man, he did every single thing that he said he was going to do. And, you know, he's, that's why he's been uh, one of my mentors to this day, like one of my great friends and, you know, he always come through for me. So that was a great decision for me going to city college. Man, you know what? I'm, with, I, I'm friends with coach. I'm like echoing. I'm friends with coach Oyang nephew. And he didn't know we knew each other until after I ran at Merit, right? And after yeah. I ran, he just transfer over. And I'm like, dude, I can't just go to this. Because it, it's always cold over by City College. And I ain't really like the cold in the fall. Um, but, Dre, how did you do your first year at JC? Did you did you win state in JC that year, too? Actually, got I did good. I did real good, man. I um, I had... I had ran uh, like 20, 80 indoors and I came out and I was still running just the one and the two. And I had some good success in the hundred, um, but I got hurt before state meet. So I know I didn't win that wow. year. I got hurt right before state meet. But like you said, it was always cold over there. <laughs> cold, hey, man. But we did good, man. 
Hey, hold on. You get hurt before state meet. When did you start running the specializing in the 400 and 200? When did you drop the 100 from your races? When I went to SC, and so I went to, so every time, everywhere I went, man, I wanted to like make a statement. When I went to SC, uh, Jerome Davis was the guy. Like it was his team. Like that's what, and so when he left, there was nobody that, that ran the four. And coach was like, if you want to, if you want to do something, then show me you can run the four. And I said, I'll do anything you tell me to do. He put me on first leg in this relay, like first leg. And I'm off, off the first leg. I think I ran like 45, four or something like that. And he was like, you run the 400 from now on. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and when I tell you, I never did block starts at SC since then. I had never, I never gotten the blocks at SC. We never did block starts. I never did no 100 meter stuff. I ran the four by one. I anchored the four by one, but I didn't run no 100 to, at, at all at SC. I didn't start running the 100 again until after I graduated SC. Mm. So Tasha, you talked about that your your loss during your senior season, no, your junior year, right? And mm -hmm. you went on to win all these things. First coming out of high school, you chose and went to University of Texas, right? Mm -hmm. What what yes. brought up? I mean, one they was raw as shit at the time. What was the coach name? Beverly was it? Was it Beverly? Yep. Coach Bev Beverly, Kearney. right? Bev Kearney, really good, really good coach, right? It, 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 is she the reason you chose to go out to University of Texas? Or did you, I mean, I'm pretty sure you had offers from everybody. Yes. So yeah, offers from everybody. So um, UT, you know, they had one, they had, they have, they were dominating for probably the past couple of years before I graduated from high school. Um, they had Angie Vaughn who had just won the NCAA in the hundred hurdles. Um, they had depth in every pretty much every event, right? Um, Bev Kearney, black female, um, like just, she just boss, like, you know, she, her jury, she real flossy, you know, and just, mm -hmm. so she, she, um, it was because of her and just the, um, so I think another thing, me going to Logan was that I, I, I love the team environment. Like the fact that we had, a team of girls who all was focused on going to college. You know, we was all trying to be the best. Didn't nobody want to just be on the relay. We all wanted to individually be the best at our individual events, right? So when I was looking for a team, I wanted that same environment where it's like you expect nothing but the best. Like you, you not coming here to, to get second or third, right? So that was a big part of it too. Um, I love the way on my recruiting trip, how, you know, everybody was so family this and, you know, we're a team and we got each other's back and, you know, Bev presented it as if it was, um, as if she was also a mother figure to the girls. So that was, that was my reasoning for choosing um, UT. Yeah. Do, do, do track, do track, I, I transferred in late. Um, to Arizona State, and so mm -hmm. great. You can help us out with the question. Do track runners red shirt in college? Do they red shirt in college, or do they just go? Oh, they red they shirt? can. They uh -huh. shirt. Oh, they red can. Shirt. Okay, okay. I ne I never. I thought about that because I'm like, hey, I know football. They red shirt, but I don't remember no one ever. Arizona State is like, man, we giving you four years. You better <laughs> do what I need for years it's and not, get up out of here. I haven't really. It's not super common. I don't think in track, but yeah, because you know they actually utilize that year in exactly. football. You know, to they they strategize that out, but no, they don't really do that in track. My question it, is, how do you? Because this is why I never ran track. Even the, all my football coaches. <laughs> this is how why do I never you ran track. mentally prepare yourself to go to practice? knowing all you finna do is run <laughs> <laughs> like at least we gonna condition in football but then we gonna throw the ball around we gonna run some plays y'all just run it that's not true it ain't just running that's the thing like i don't like to run like i don't like to run tasha was talking about this on it she has during the morning motivation and she was making this uh analogy of life of being pulled and so there's different things in your training aspect that keep it extremely exciting. Like I hate to run. Like I'm, I don't, I like training. 
I like being in conditioning and in different seasons. And when you first get into the season, like you may have a base training um, and different people's program has a different, different way that they do their base training. Um, uh, but then that's a lot of fall running, like, right. That's running. But then when you get down to the, the training part, like you might be doing your sprints, your heel days, like Tasha's talking about the pulley, you got a lot of pulley stuff. Um, so there's different aspects of how you're going to train. Your weight training program is rigorous. Like there's just so many different moving pieces in track and field that doesn't ever make it mundane. So um, it's it's not like you just get out there and just run every day. And especially if you're a hurdler, it definitely ain't that way. What would you think, Tosh? I was going to say the same thing. Um, I think that, I think that's Dre's. It's, it's his. Okay. I think that um, it just depends on what you're, you, it may look like we just running, right? But we working on different things. You working on different parts of your races. When you're supposed to be hitting a different gear right here. Where where is your, you know, it's it's it, it like I said, it may look like you just running, but it's always a way to change something up and make it exciting. You'd be frustrated as hell. You could you didn't get something, you know, but um it's always, you know, you trying to get to well, I'm not gonna say always. When you have a when you have a really good coach, right? who can break down your race, who can break down where you're supposed to be doing certain things at, um, who can look at a little bit. Because once you get to that elite level, it's not about the big stuff, right? It's about focusing on the small stuff that can make a huge change in your race. Right, right. So um, it's getting those little bitty things down. So that's how we look at it when we going in. That's our perspective, right? I know I'm working on this today, right? We know it's going to be hard. So it's, that's why that's why Lo said it's a whole different mentality of being a track athlete, track and field, because you know going in, it's gonna be hard. Like it is going to be hard. Don't take a year off and think that you're gonna hop back in it, you know, and be right. You're gonna get back to where you was easily. It's it's tough. My daughter is hey. going through that right now. Hey, Ken, here's the thing. What you just heard was the difference between track runners and a person that ran track, right? Because I just That's ran what track. That's sounded so like to me. To me uh -uh, all I thought we, you know, I thought we did track. was run. Yeah. Like, There's I'm track practice. runners and people that just run fast. I just so Ken, I t I'm like, you can Well, I'm going to practice just to run all day, right? If they go to difference. Wasn't that, wasn't that technical about it to me? <laughs> How fast you can get around the track right? from the naked eye i'm like you know nah. there's nothing technical about it this is, why I be like, you know, this is why i say and then tasha said something else was good that's why i knew track wasn't my thing because tasha <laughs> said that she was at a school where we not just running to be on a relay when I got to Arizona State, I was like, mm, I'm cool with being on this relay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need nothing else. <laughs> and I right? need you to get a big lead <laughs> before you hand me the baton. Put me on the relay, right? <laughs> hey, but oh my gosh. definitely track is sports. <laughs> Great. What was it like when you got finished got recruited? I know you got recruited by all the Pac Pac 10 schools at the time. What made you choose USC? Uh, I mean, really, I think it was the, uh, the legacy of USC. It was everything that came with it. Um, and then the year I went to USC, it was time, uh, time magazine school of the year. Oh, wow. Right. And so being, you know, for me, a kid who wasn't even supposed to make it to being able to get a full scholarship to time magazine school of the year was a big deal for me. And so, it, it had everything I needed. It had everything that that state that made a statement that said, you know, I made it and I'm on my way. And so yeah, that's the the reason I chose SC. Mm, that's big, man. Because I chose when I I chose Arizona State. I did want to go to Arizona State, but back when I was getting recruited, they would send me these things. I would look through their media guides and stuff like that. I used to get a media guide <laughs> all the time and be like. She's cute. <laughs> but when, he, when, he, when he said when he said everything that comes with it, I was like, mm. so at it first, is LA. Like, no, no lie. First, I kind of really was like, okay, dude, I'm going to University of Arizona. They had this girl, Brianna Glenn, at the time. Oh, and really? Glenn was the poster girl of the the school. I'm like, I just want to be at University of Arizona, University of Arizona right? 
Um, but then I took my recruiting trip to Arizona State and was like, oh, this is cool, right? It's like, I'm not hella far from Oakland. I'm just, a, you know, not too far away. And then everything with that the environment was cool. And it, I kind of like what he got sucked in on it being like my first real recruiting trip too, right? Mm-hmm. Then that special happened, Ken. I didn't get the whole Jesus. He got a game? Track don't get the Jesus shows for a season. Uh, no, nah, you don't do that. But for I, track. but I do wonder who had the best parties out of Arizona State and USC because I know that Arizona like, State, especially that's USC was. Even, dude, nah, but USC even. at that time with the football. That no, 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 Ken, no. We were the number one party school in the country. Yeah, that's I not know, right. I know, but who's number two? You know, like it wasn't even close. Not like, SC. Uh, hey, man, it ain't close, man. Uh, yeah. Arizona State is. Uh, so was I. <laughs> hey, but the reason it can't be SC, reason it's not SC at the party school, because there's so much to do outside of USC yes. in yeah. LA. Okay. You know, yeah. being in Southern California, Arizona State is only Arizona State. So right, we have party right, right. every day. You know, yeah. when we get 21, we go into the older party, the club and whatnot, but it's still the same people. Like you just partying all the time. I, I, right. knew, I knew ASU was number one. I knew that, but I thought ASU, ASU. might be up there. Damn. Yeah, but Ken, it's kind of like, it's like track. Do it matter who's number two if you're not Good number point. one? Right. Like, that's that's kind of like track, right? The Good basis point. of everything. Um, Tasha, so, when, so we talked about you being at recruiting and choosing um, Texas going there. What made you transfer back home to um, USC? So um, I did not, I did not get along with Bev, uh, my coach. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, Our, I think because I was so, um, I'm just going to say Bev's technique is to uh, break you down and then build you back up. Right. So that wasn't, that didn't mesh well with me because I had always had something to say, you know, or I had an opinion or I'm questioning why is, why is this, right? So in high school, you know, my coach, Remy, um, was, he coached professionals. He was open to questions. He would give you the reasoning. So I was used to that type of communication, right? Um, and it was, what I was, what I was sold on was not the reality of the, of the program. And so I was like, I'm going back home. Like I'm going back home and I don't want to go to UCLA because UCLA, when I was being recruited, UCLA, it was a rumor that they had told a bunch of people that I had committed to their program. And so, um, I didn't even get recruited by SC because SC had told me that UCLA, whatever, it was some communication stuff. I did ne- definitely didn't want to go to Cal because Cal, like, why? Why would I go to Cal? Like, no. So I was like, I'm going, I'm going home and I'm going to SC. I contacted Coach Alice um, and, you know, Carla Estes was there. She was able to give me like some insight on the relationship that she had with Coach Alice and how, what kind of coach he was. And I was so like, I was still, you know, I was, I was so unhappy at Texas and I was still, you know, ranked top five in the country in my events. And, um, I was able to get, get in, get a spot at USC. So super, super. Not not only that, not only that, Tasha won, she was able to win a national championship with Texas then came over to SC and helped mm. them win a national title. That's, I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Win a title at one school, switch on, schools, and then win title again. Hold on, you talking team title? Team, team title. title. So I'm, I'm like Tasha. I, I, when I ran junior college, I didn't, I didn't have a team. It was just individual races. We know I compete for a team title. And I think, I think individually, I took like third myself <laughs> by, winning two, <laughs> by winning two events. You got 20 points, right? But when I got to Arizona State and I really watched my first Pac-10 uh, meet and watch how the culture was breaking down, how they were scoring, what the prediction of the meet should be, who should get these points here and who should get this point here, I was like, oh, this shit, they, it's serious, right? Because yes. they were predicting this person, you're going to get us five points, you're going to get us six points. But we would to go win a national team title, and you got y'all got rings for that too, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, get rings for that. Then come to SC and get another ring for the and 
to win a team title nationally, even come from SC, you competing with the SEC schools, right? So you still got mm-hmm. the they LSU's that's going to get – beating Texas, LSU's going to get all these points. Um, Arkansas and them, one of them schools just have a bunch of distance runners that they say we go get 50 points from distance running, right? But to go win that national championship – um, when Tasha left, see, that's how fast she is. She go and come back that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it like, um, Tasha, going to SC and winning the national title oh. for, on the women's side oh. over Texas? Oh, man. That is, that's one of the best feelings, right? Because to be honest, like, it, it's not, a, it wasn't a lot of people happy, right, at the UT in the UT camp, right? So mm. not that I was even concentrating on that when I was competing, right? Knowing that they was there, but just knowing that like Coach Alice, the type of coach he is, he don't, he not gonna break you down. You've been doing great, right? You you know what you need to do, let's get it done. He not, you know, harping over you, stressing you out. I was so happy. Like I was just a happy athlete competing, doing what I did. Um, and for us to win, it was just to know how we won when I was at UT, it was just, it was just, it was completely different. And I, I mean, it was, it was a great, great experience. Um, and you know, with those two different programs, it just, if my children, right, were, were to go and compete at a school, it just gave me insight on what type of questions to ask you know, um, what to look for in different programs and stuff like that. But that, that moment was, was awesome because they didn't have to give me that opportunity to transfer, you know, um, but I'm, I'm glad they did. It was great. Hey, hey Dre, I'm going to ask you the question. I'm going to ask Tasha the same question. Dre, give me your two, well, give me, give me, give me two for each event, your two biggest rivals in each event that you ran, like your rival, like, hey, you know what? I know I got to get, I got to bring my A game today because this motherfucker going to be on my heel. <laughs> Give me your two biggest rivals, whether it was in high school, USC, or even when you ran professionally after that. So my biggest rival, and I made it, he was my biggest rival because uh, we would always lock up and we would trade battles and it would be a big deal. White Mike. Mike Kenya. Mike Kenya. White Mike, man. Every damn time. And he'd make me, he would take me to the deep end, man, every time. And so every time we ran the four, man, I knew we, we was gonna have to 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 bring it. Him and Tony Berrien. Tony Berrien was a was a Arizona, uh, from State, Arizona State. We used to Arizona battle State. all the time. Um, those are like super big rivals. And then like in the uh, two, um, Jerome Avery became a big rival because, see, Jerome was good in high school, but then Jerome blossomed in college. He became really good, like really, really good. And on the pro circuit, he became good. And we always would go back and we would talk shit to each other. We'd be, you know, we was cool, but we'd talk shit. We didn't want to lose to each other. And, um, you know, every time we seen each other, it was always going to be a good race, you know? So those are like uh, my, my two. And then I think, uh, as a from a team standpoint, we always had big rivals with um, in four by four that we used to bang with LSU and Baylor. The same, the same, the same, yeah, same. Thing. We you know, but to, we, y'all, we, y'all, when we was there, SU had a good squad, but for whatever reason, it wasn't consistent all the time. It was um, who was that guy? Marcus Brunson. Marcus Marcus Brunson, was, but he was always running fast. You had that one dude that was real Tony Baroness, another cat. Tony Barry, um, Michael, Michael, um, what was Michael's name? He had the Jamaican cat. He was a 400 meter runner too. Yeah. Um, Michael, and then they had, um, oh, Dwight, Dwight, um, DP, long jumper, Phillips. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. D was there, D- but he, but he, but he wouldn't be on the four by four. They wouldn't put him. No, nah, it would be on. No, nah, the four by four was like you said. They were. It, it was inconsistent. Yeah. I think what happened is the the year after I left. Our um, they just put all the scholarships towards four by four relay team because they started running three hundred one yeah. consistently. Three hundred one. That was after. But did I, I didn't that get was after. Yeah, that was after. That was but after, what? right? Yeah. Um. Um. One crazy story about Mike Kane. This is I knew race track was a different thing. Ken, you know, back in the day, I'm thinking 
your fastest guy is your anchor leg, right? Cool. That day, Arizona go dual me time. Arizona go put him on anchor leg. Man, every fucking four by one, and I'm the slowest in the four by one. And they got me on third leg with Mike Kenya. And I would get a lead every time. And I just hear Mike hawking me down. But they they anchor leg, Matt Leah. Matt Leah wasn't as fast as our anchor leg. So even though Mike can hawk me down, I remember Matt Leah. I'm giving the stick off and Matt is getting caught. Right, but I, I do. I'm coach. Take me off the four by one. You getting me embarrassed right now? I'm getting a stick, and all I hear is everybody going, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. come on, bro! I'm getting walked. I'm getting walked every time. Get me off of this, right, Tasha? Who was your two biggest rivals? Um, high school, college, and on on the circuit for you? Dang, I would have to say in high school, it would definitely be Davida Shepard. Davida yeah. Shepard, every single time. If we saw each other at the meet, it'd be like, God, dang. You know, it was like my my high school career in the hurdles was pretty easy. Like, it wasn't really anybody, um, definitely not in North Coast region that could, that would push me, right? But if I saw the Vita there, it was it was on and popping. We knew we was gonna have to in the 100 hurdles or 300 hurdles. Did she go to Encinal and then to De Anza? Or was she like I remember her b- name being at two different was or was she just De Anza? She is De Anza. Just De Anza. I don't okay. 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 I thought she was the Encinal, then went to De Anza. Okay, I don't maybe know. Not. I think I she know. did transfer. Did she? I just remember being yeah. De Anza. I don't remember. She might have been. Yeah, she might. Because I remember they had a doing Encinal had a really good team. I thought she was on that team as well, but I know she ended up at De Anza. Okay, mm-hmm. so. And then I think at at um, at SC it would have to definitely be Sheena in the four hundred hurdles, um, and then the hundred hurdles. Hmm. Like locally, I would say, I don't even know who it would be. Like just around, you know, LA, not in the 100 hurdles. Um, but yeah. yeah. The that, but Cena was like, you know, like that being a rival, like all the time, because y'all was like so good in that 400 hurdles. It's like we got to see each other dual meet. Yeah. Regionals, Pac 10, <laughs> regionals. They do regional now, but Pac 10, then nationals, then that's a lot yes. of races year after year, too, though. You know, um, I commend all the 400 hurdles runners, bro. I remember when um, Ricky Harris fucking running for mm-hmm. Florida. It's her 400 hurdle time was faster than my open time. I'm like, how the hell they run so fast with these? How many hurdles? Is it 10? Is it 10 hurdles yes. in the 400 hurdles? With 10 uh-huh. hurdles in the way, how can you still run that fast, right? right. I'm about to be like, hey, I respect our 400 hurdlers, man, because I watched them practice, right? I watched them practice. We had a we had a good one. Joni was Joni was good. Joni could have been better um, in the 400 hurdles, but we was at a party school. <laughs> like literally, I don't, I didn't know we didn't. I thought we didn't take it serious enough because we yes. party so much. We party so Joni much. Was a, Joni was one of my rivals in in um in the four by four in the in high school. So yeah, we still talk today. Yeah, yeah. Joni, Joni was, and it was like we party. You, you need to see what our house party was like in college. And like, (laughs) and then I talked to other people, and they'd be like, "What? I don't drink. Y'all drink? Like, we partying, right? Yeah. But track is one of those sports where you have to take care of your body. Okay. It was like that at UT. Like it was a big, like all the athletes, track and football, stuck together. We always was out. Always was out. So then when I transferred to SC, like you said, everything is so much out there. Everybody going to different stuff. It wasn't the same. Not even right. the, I mean, we was tight within the, the you know, the track and, and some of the football, but it wasn't, it's nothing, it was nothing like UT. So yeah, I get that. Yeah, and I just was able to Austin, go to Arizona State LA. a couple of weeks ago. That was, that's uh-huh. a nice campus. I like that yeah. campus. Which campus? Yeah. Arizona State. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, yes, that's my, nice. I tried to that's get nice. my daughter to go. She cool. She cool. She didn't want to do the whole Arizona State thing. She <laughs> like, take me to, I'm going to the South, going to Atlanta. Um, You know, it is. Yeah. Weird. They got to make so. their own way. They got to make their own way, man. Yeah. Uh, great. How many titles did you end up winning or finished with by the time you left um, SC? Oh, man. 
whether it was Pac-10s, um, NCAAs, or I say, how many times All-American are you? Ooh, how many times All-American? I am All-American six times. Six times All-American. What about you, Tasha? Oh, I think it is six times for me. Mm. I think All-American yeah, yeah. in, in college, in college. Yeah, in college, in college. I think it's okay. six. Help, help us out. Help us out. How do you, how do you get, is it all American by race or do, or is it indoor out? Like, how do you get six? By, it's by race top, top eight. Yeah. And you're, it's top eight American. Yeah. Top eight. For the top, top eight, eight American. All American. Yeah. Oh, it's at, American? it's at, you basically American. you got a place at, at NCAA's top eight. It's not, what you ran that year, what, what, if your time, yeah. if you was, if you was number one, but you didn't produce at NC's, you don't get that all American status. You, you are, you were ranked, but you were not all American if you didn't make the final at, uh, at the championships. See, this is what I like about track is production based <laughs> basketball, football. It's a vote by right. media members you right. know that that could be political sometimes <laughs> that track nine what'd you run that's it I like right that. i like hey that. i like but that. so so tasha you running you've tracked and going to go do all of these things now you represented the united states team went to cuba and in your youth days right dre what was it like for you when you first touched the um professional circuit um running like that's correct no, that, 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 that was crazy because, you know, I even so as a professional, like that was my fifth year running track, mm. right? That was my <laughs> fifth year running track. I still didn't really, I was still a rookie, man. Like I didn't know a whole lot about anything. Like I didn't get to do the, the um, like Tasha, she traveled international when she was uh, in high school. Like I didn't get to do all that. So, I mean, I remember my first race, man, it was like, uh can you race uh on can you race this weekend i was like hell yeah they sent my ticket that day i left the next day it was a thursday and they flew me over to uh to canada and i got to canada this is this is my first race I went to canada i got off the plane and i was excited and i was just standing there like where the hell do i go <laughs> i didn't know what to do next I called my dad. I was like, hey, man, I, uh, I actually don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> I don't know how to get to my hotel. And so I was just trying to figure out all this stuff. Because, like, you know, you when you're in college traveling, everything's taken care of for you. Yeah, right. right? All, when you, when you like, on the, like, especially the guy was coming out, I was, like, going right on the B level, like, right there. They gave me, you want to fly? Here's your ticket. And then this gave me instructions or, like, how to get there and stuff like that. So it was crazy, um, you know, Figuring out, uh, I didn't have an agent at first. Me and Tasha ended up having the same agent uh, after a while, but like um, having to go collect your money because like you don't get until you get your contract, which I didn't get till later. You don't get a uh, you don't get a check every month. You got to get your money. You either get your money at the meet or you got to get them mail you your money. So it was just like a lot of stuff I had to learn, which was like it was crazy trying to learn it on the fly. All right. Wow. So now when you're running track professionally like that, because, OK, so like in basketball, guys will go overseas and play professionally. And you hear a lot of stories about, you know, not getting that check that they said they was going to mail at the end of the week. Does yeah. that happen? Does that happen in track or no, yeah. is it? pretty? Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hell yeah. You can go out to a, a race and then the me promoters like they're going to get they're going to mail you a check. And then you be like months and months and months later, you ain't got no check. They keep yeah. telling you it's gonna come, you ain't get no check. So that's a, you gotta learn that too. You gotta take some lumps. I had to learn that the the hard way too. So yeah, it's the same way. Wow, I never knew. I never knew that. I never knew that. I thought you got paid. One do 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 getting paid depends on how you well you place in these races. Like, do you make more money if you place higher? Great question. So yeah, so. You get so you can negotiate your appearance fee, right? So I would negotiate an appearance fee. If you want me to show up, I want this much money up front just to show up. Then you get paid for your um your uh prize money. Yeah, your prize money, how you do in the race, right? And then if you like run fast enough, they give you another bonus, right? But you can be like, look, I want my money 
my appearance fee up front, right? So you always got your for show money up front. And then the other money, this, which was the long part, was standing in that, staying after the track meet, making sure you stay on, stay in the meet promoter's uh, office until y'all got paid. We'd be there till like midnight, waiting for our checks to come. I'd be like, give me my, my check. And they, then they would try to give you some stuff like, um, they didn't want to, they'd be like, we got, we only got euros, so we're going to pay you in. I'm like, no, give me my euros. I'll go, I'll, I'll take the euros. <laughs> and I like the euros more because it was worth more. <laughs> I try to get you and it'd be like, you want, I won this one race. It's like, you want $2,500 American or Euro? I was like, give me them damn Euros because it was worth more. That was more, right. that was worth more than transfer. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was thinking. I was like, do you ever get to a race and be like, nah, I'm not getting in the block until y'all pay me. And then they got two empty lanes with the audience trying to figure out. I didn't get to that level to make those kind of decisions. <laughs> <laughs> those are real business decisions. Those are business decisions, right? Oh, man. <laughs> but that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother discussion in track and field. Like you know, you had when we was running right. You had the Marion Jones. You had the Maurice Screens, um, who was their appearance fee would be more than the total that they pay in the, in the prize money, right? Which not knocking them for their hustle, but it's like, you got eight lanes, right? You, you got eight lanes, you gotta have a race. Like right. it, was, it was nothing to regulate like that. It was nothing to regulate. They could give you, you know, I'm not even gonna give you no appearance money to come to this meet. I'm, you can get what you get in this race, right? So, that was a whole nother when you're trying to make a living off a of track. Like, golly. Wow. The can't... only meet, the only meet that's not like that is USA's. That's the only one that's mm -hmm. like fair, right? Because there is no appearance fee unless they're doing something that I don't know about. But there's no appearance fee, and right. you know you get your if you win first, second, third, you get your prize money. Mm -hmm. Well, the mm -hmm. the hot topic now in sports is the discrepancy in pay between men and women. Is it is there a huge discrepancy in track or is that a little more fair, you know, even or what? what's the? I think it used to be. I don't know now, Dre. I don't know. Maybe, you know. I think that there's a in track and field, the sport is 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 not um, like high, high volume producing like a basketball or a Football. There's not enough revenue that's driven to be like these guys are gonna make a hundred million dollars a year, and then the women are gonna bring in, you know, just twenty million dollars. Um, because when you come to the meet, the women are running just as fast, and they show off just as much. And so you got women out there that got some really good contracts. Now, I think that where it's gonna reign supreme is like the hundred meters for the men is always gonna be like the creme de la creme of the, of the sport, right? Who's the fastest man in the world, right? The fastest man in the world. So Usain Bolt was probably always going to be the highest paid track and field athlete. Um, and then, but I think you do have some women that are making, I know someone, you know, that are making some really good contracts, um, but I don't think it's as deep as in uh, WNBA versus NBA and things like that. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's not as deep, but it, there is still a difference. But I was thinking, like, someone like Allison Felix, right, um, who was global. I'm thinking, like, her meet appearance is definitely as important as on the man's side. because Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so she's like a unicorn, though, right? Her, like, her, Marion Jones, they're, like, the unicorn. Usain Bolt are, like, the unicorns. <laughs> Of track okay. and field, like they don't come often, you know, and they are going to get paid wherever yeah. they go. The sport um, just for coming. The sport is monopolized by the top, the the top eight, or the, really the top three, top yes. three to four, right? So you got Nike, you got Adidas, um, New Balance, right? So if Nike got the number one person and they're paying this person all this much money. And then let's say they got the number two person. They got to pay all this much money. Then the number three person got to be like, well, who am I going to sign with? Am I going to sign with Nike? Because I'm not going to get much number one, number two person. Or do I get the maximum deal at Adidas, right? So they're going to go with Adidas and get the maximum they can get at Adidas. So now you got the fourth and the fifth person like, well, where do I sign at? Who am I going to sign with, right? 
So you might get these people who got some good contracts, but it's going to be monopolized by the, the very top percent. That's like she said, the unicorn, like no one's making, no one's making as close to the money as you just saying Bo is. Um, and female wise, there's nobody making, there's no one close to making what Allison's making. Allison is as a demand. She didn't drop from Nike to Athletica and, and just put Athletica on her back. And mm-hmm. she can do that. Like, so what's, not, that, what's, that what's that Athletica? That's a brand? Athletica mm-hmm. is a brand. Athletica is actually one of the largest clothing lines. They're owned with um, Gap, Banana Republic, and um, whoever Gap else owns. I guess Gap Lab. Old Navy. Old Navy. Old, Old Navy. Navy, yeah. So they're actually, I think, the one of the largest clothing lines. They're actually, I think they're worth more than, I was reading the article, they're worth more than, a lot, well, I won't say Nike, I don't know, but they're one of the largest clothing brands. And, uh, you know, she went with Athletica, and she doing great. I got, I but got she went. She, she she got, went with she Athletica because after of. she, um, you know, after she got pregnant. Um, it, it's crazy in twenty what twenty twenty, right. I think they just Nike just changed their contracts to where you know as a female athlete you you have some time to have your child and come back. So even in Allison's contract, it was nowhere in there for her to have space to have a child um and because of the pushback that's a whole nother movement in um you know in track and field right now that they are trying to get um some things changed in that aspect of your contract like i mean you know because it's people are losing contracts because they start in families but you know it's like i'm i'm ranked in the top in the world right top 10 so yeah wow I, I got a question. How much of um, the Olympic goes for a uh, track running career? Like, do some people just be like, you know what? I didn't make the Olympics. I'm done with the sport, which is the, I, that's what I thought I'd be seeing sometimes. Or like, how much is the making the Olympic team goes for a, a track athlete? Or is it just something that a lot of people just dreamed on doing? So they put their all into living this dream out. I think that the Olympics is the equivalent to like winning an NBA, NBA championship title, right? Like it's, it's the pinnacle of the sport. Like you, like we, we always look at who was the Olympic champion. Like you can name a whole bunch of people who was, who was fast. They might even been the USA champion, but who was the Olympic champion? And here's the thing about it. You don't even win no money to win the Olympic champion, but it's a lot that comes with it. Right? After, 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 if I win the Olympics, man, my contract about to be there. But me winning the actual Olympics itself, there's not a check for you winning the Olympics, but it's the biggest stage you can be on, and it means the most uh, of everything. So you, if you're training for it, like yes, you want to be able to hit to the point where you win the Olympic title. Like that is that is everything. But there's a lot of people that just can have a really good career and not win the Olympics, and not so, even make the team. It's making it's, uh, let's say um, placing fourth in the. Um, Olympic trials. Is that equivalent to like losing um, as a buzzer beater? Is that the equivalent to that? Like placing fourth Ooh. in the Olympic trials? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. If it's a, depending, depending on the race. Tasha's race, Let's, yes. Okay. Let's, I'm going to say, because I know the 100 got a relay, the 400 got a relay, but if you yeah. fourth in the 200, like, yes. what, come, what do you get for being yes. fourth in the 200? You know, no relay team, no nothing. Nothing. Right? You get to go home. Right. Wow. But and then, got- and there's a season, there's still a season after the Olympics, right? So you, you, you didn't make the Olympics. <laughs> there's still meets after that you can still go to, you know, but yes, to be that close, like, you know, what is it? The top two, they take the top three onto the top team. Three. Top three. three. Yeah. To be that close and not make it is just, oh my gosh. Like I only made it to the semifinals of the Olympic trials, the race before the finals. And I feel like that was, I was talking to Dre about that maybe a month ago. Like I, that will always be like, Ugh, I can't, I, you know, people be like semifinalists at the Olympic trials. Like, Ugh, don't, don't say that. I know it's <laughs> like, it, that should sound good to me, but I guess to you, it's like, nah, bro. It sound good to me. Just, just Listen, say my name and just let me come on stage. <laughs> Dre, what's the farthest you've made in the trials? Finals. You made it to the finals? Mm-hmm. Wow. Finals. Mm-hmm. How, how you, 
Is this the one at Sacramento? I think I watched that race. Was it at Sac? Mm, how many finals at Stanford? Oh, at Stanford. Oh, they had the Stanford. Olympic trial. They had the Olympic trials at Stanford. No, Olympic trials. Olympic trials. I came in. I, Olympic trials. I made it to the semis, and then in the just the USA trials, I made it to the the final. To the, the Olympic final. trials, I didn't make it to the to the final. How do you, Tasha? How do you get yourself up for the season after the Olympic trials? Like, how do I go still run after I placed fifth in the four hundred? Like, I don't want to do shit right now. My season is <laughs> over, right? Now I got to go fly. I mean, I got to go to New York or somewhere to keep running. How do you get the energy up to keep going? It's a mindset. It's 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 just knowing that it's a journey. And I think, I think being on that, on the elite level really teaches you that even when you do everything right, right. Even when you've done everything that you know how to do, your coaches know how to do, you had the perfect race. You might've dropped a PR, but you got fourth, right. You dropped your personal record and you still got to be okay with you did not make the team. You know, you putting in your all doesn't mean that you're going to have the outcome that you want all the time. Um, and that's just a huge lesson as an athlete. You're not going to, you could, it, your production does not always equal out to the outcome that you want, but it's going to put you where you need it to be. Right. So that was just my, that's just my perspective that I got from, from being an athlete. Like you can put in all the work, but just know. You, you will eventually get to where you are supposed to be. It might not be where you saw yourself, right? But, and you just get back on it, get back on it and keep going. If you decide, you know, definitely, if you decide that you're going back in, don't go back in halfway, right? Go back in, give it your all again and see if you get there. So hopefully it wasn't your last year. You was like, listen, I'm, I'm 42. I'm, I'm going ahead and chalk it up. <laughs> you can always be a rapper. Uh, yeah. so, so basically you're saying, because what I heard and what I want, you know, some of our younger viewers to get from what you just said, because that was a bar to me. Not everyone gets a trophy. Yes. You're not going to always get the not, trophy. Not gonna, everybody, all participants don't get a trophy. And I don't care how hard you worked and how bad you wanted and how many times your mama brought you to practice. Not everybody get a trophy. And, and, and Ken, that's the reason I can't coach high school. I didn't come coach high school track. Yeah, yeah. One of the kids is not the same, right? You can't you can't do the workouts that we did <laughs> to the kids nowadays. Right? Right. They, <laughs> they go quit. They go, you, you might not get another shot. They go quit, right? Mm -hmm. But the athlete's so different, I can't get into coaching. I would have to be Coach Zoe. Shout out to Zoe. We had Zoe on our podcast. Oh. Zoe, Zoe said he... Those said everybody was just coming to him. He didn't recruit nobody, but I said that's another topic, right? <laughs> another topic, right? He said, um, he said that he um he said, you know, they was coming. He had the summer track, AC track club, and stuff like that. And and, and everybody was just coming. So then they just came to Mac. Mysteriously, they ended up at Mac. Shout out to Zoe and, and Mac, right? Did you guys ever thought, and I know you guys doing your training and great thing with that. You guys ever thought about coaching track and or opening your own track club, starting your own track club? So I coached with Curtis for, well, I, yeah, I coached with Curtis. I mean, or, or I would, how do I say it? I would assist him. I would learn from him. I sat under his wing and I just would assist, right? In any way possible because I wanted to learn. So I was there just helping out when he was at EOYDC or was at Laney. And, um, you know, I learned so much uh, from just being there with Curtis and, and, and that, and so when he left to go to Oregon, I was helping out running the EOYDC program. And it's a lot, man. And one of the things that I feel that I got a lot of respect for, like some great coaches, is that you got to be there for the kids, right? You got to be there. You got to be able to take a kid and develop their talent. You got to be all in. And a lot of these kids don't get a chance to have a coach that's all in with them that develops their talent, which I was asking you about that. Do you feel that you would have went further if you would have took the time to be developed athlete, that was when we was going back. Oh, the age. oh, most definitely, right? Um, if I so my thing is, if I knew all that track entailed before I did it, right? 
I didn't know all that track and tail. It's kind of like what Ken said with um, me just getting out and running, right? I didn't know that track. What well, my issue going to track? I was my freshman year of football, and I got hurt at at, at Laney. And I'm like, dude, I'm only 165 pounds low. Go run track and get faster. And I go to run track. True story. My first race was either in a sprint medley, and I had the eight. No, we were in a distance medley, and I had the 800 meter. No, sprint medley. I had the 800, eight distance medley. I had the 800 of that medley, and I take off running full go uh, for 400 meters. And they like, yo, you got another one. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got you a whole another lap. No. Another no. lap. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so the coach kept trying to figure out where to play, where to put me at in in a, in a sprint. Was I 100, 200? So he said, after that sprint medley, you're a 400 meter runner. After seeing you just run one lap like that, you got another one to go. I'm letting the team down because I'm not getting around this track again, right? It was a um, it was a relay meet at Contra Costa College. So then I started running a 400, but it wasn't like how you said the the transition phase, all of these things that went into it. I was never taught. It was just you're running, you just running. Coach Slaughter was a hard coach because he never smiled. He never told you good job on this. It was like cool, net line, walk your lap, line it back up, and I'm like, dude, so. I'm great. I was just running. If I got developed and knew everything that um, track entailed as far as um, the transitional phases, the the weight room and all of these things. So we had Coach Compton, and it would have been different if Coach Compton was the coach because Coach Compton was in the weight room, and Coach Compton did these things when he was in the weight room that helped in my second year of running. But my first year, I was just getting out there and running. Mm-hmm. I had no intentions on it, and I'm like, I played fourth in state. And I'm like, shit, I'm fourth in state my first year. The next year, I get beat by – who beat me? It could have been Mike Mitchell. Y'all know Mike Mitchell? Mm-hmm. My, my, Mike Mitchell beat me my second year, and it was like everything just kind of took off. But I never really had all of those things that you talked about, Dre. So I could have went – naturally, I can run. Technically, I, I wasn't a track runner. I wasn't an yep. athlete because when you talk about these things y'all had to do – and I told you, when I I knew I wasn't a track runner after the NCAAs in LSU, right? I, I was happy. I'm a, I played eighth. I'm an All-American, Ken. I was eighth, right? That last <laughs> final yes. All-American list was us, right? But when we had this race in um, Tennessee, got Leonard Scott and Gary Kakaya. You ever beat Gary Kakaya, um, Dre? I don't even remember that name. Man, this motherfucker, he was hella fast from the University of Tennessee, right? And I was the first, I was the first leg, and I'm thinking we gonna beat Tennessee. We got a good lead at third, and Justin Gatlin just yelled like <laughs> he screamed it at the 200 meter mark. Let's go! And took off on the whole field, and it was like, I'm not, I quit, bro. I quit. <laughs> if, if, if this 100 meter runner is doing this in the 400, I don't stand a chance in this race. I'm going back to football, man. So, Dre, I think if I had all the courtesies, the coach Pittman at an early age, and those uh-huh. coaches that could have developed it, even if I would have ran in high school with Zoe, coaches that would have developed that where I knew the technical aspect of it, I think I could have been good. And see, I think that's important because, like, you look at these kids now. And what's happening is you have a lot of coaches that are around our age that have been through the programs. They know a lot more. The rate of information is so much faster now. So you have a lot of people who can coach a lot better because they have more information. And there's a lot more recovery tools. Like Tasha's daughter um, got the number one time in the country for the 400 at, at her age. And then she sent me a picture of her. She got the recovery boots on. I'm like, see, we wasn't putting on recovery boots. <laughs> nah, nah, bro. We Don't take a nap. That was our recovery. <laughs> you take a nap. Yeah, Here, a eat an orange, right? Eat an orange. <laughs> He's taking a nap. That's right. right. Drink okay, the free sun and get ready for your next race. <laughs> hey, you go, you go get, go get out the shade so the sun don't drain you. That's how you recover. You're right. And so these kids have oh. an advantage of, of better coaching. I think, and I'm not saying that the coaches that we had were, were bad. I talked to Curtis the other day, and I think Curtis is like, you know, this conversation. I think Curtis is one of the best coaches, period, you know. Um, and I asked him, I said, man, do you think that 
the athletes that you have today are much better than the ones you had before? Or do you think that you've evolved as a coach and you're a much better coach and you have more resources? And they said, it's a little bit of both. But the fact that he has um, 20 more, 20 plus years more of knowledge um, and these, these resources that they have are far more advanced than what he ever had 20 years ago, it definitely makes an advantage for, um, for them to be able to produce at a higher range. He also said that he is a key, he also said that, um, that recruiting wise, you know, when you were coaching in Oakland, you only get to be able to, to uh, develop the kids that are here. But when you are a coach on a, on a bigger level, you can recruit nationally and get bigger. Mm-hmm. More but even that saying that there's more kids that are running faster. Like I looked at the, t- the, the track me in Texas last week, like everybody's been running fast and the kids are just running faster and faster. But I think it's because um, they have more resources to um, recovery and the coaches are, are being a little bit more knowledgeable than what they were before. What, what about you, Tasha? You ever thought about starting your own track club? I have thought about it very briefly. Um, but I have, since my kids run, I've, I have, um, I've been assistant coaching for a while now. Uh, we switched teams this year. I thought I was just going to be able to be a parent, show up, leave. That's not going um, to happen. No, that's not <laughs> And now I'm happen. coaching hurdles. So, oh, wow. um, so yeah, I mean, and I think, and I, I think that I just, I don't take that lightly. So I was like, I just want to, I just want to show up and come, you know, and leave because it, because it is a big commitment, you know, even like what's going on off the track, you know, you really want to build that rapport, it's for, at, at least for me, build that rapport um, so that they can trust what I'm saying um, and, you know, that I, that I can give them stuff to do at home, just all that kind of stuff, you know, um, so yeah, it's, I, I love it. But it is, it is, it does come. I have some big shoes to fill from from coaches that I've had. So, you know, I don't take it lightly, and it's so much to do. So definitely takes. And you only get them for a small amount of time. You know, you only have them for a little bit of time. You might have a day to do hurdles. You know, so yeah. I run a football program when I talked to Zoe about possibly doing a track program as well. One of the things Zoe made me think was one my son don't run track so mm-hmm. if, if you gonna do football you gotta think when you're doing track all of that time goes where you gonna be at with your family where is your kids doing because they don't run track so it's taking mm-hmm. so much time away from your family and it's I kind of wanted to do it because I have some football players that do run track and I didn't feel like they were being properly coached in track right yes. and I'm like dude I have all of this information. So when you're telling me things, I'm trying to correct you on what your coach have you doing. And it's like, hold on, time out. I can't correct you without being there. So I kind of yes. wanted to do it, but it was like, then I didn't want to step on nobody's toes on what they coaching is. I kind of wanted to do it. I'm like, no, I'm not. Zo, once Zo said, where you, where you go, where your family go be at when you do it? Yes. And I, and, and I know my family, my son, the, the, they are, they requires my full attention. And right. then I be have changing some kids that I'm coaching, right? So it's like, you know what? Let me just be a football coach. Um, if Dre ever started a track program, I'm sending them all to Dre. Dre got the kids. <laughs> <laughs> do, what I'm, do what you do yeah. with Dre. Um, and, and we that go was from huge there. too with Mr. Pittman. I can remember me looking for other programs because at one point it was his kids was no longer running. 3M is his wife, his son, and his daughter, Marie, Monique. And Montel, so he it was mm. started from his family, and once they was done, you know it's like okay, you have a demanding career now. You have a demanding organization that you that you've started, and he was ready to give it up. Like I gotta, I gotta go spend time with my family. And um, when I was talking to my dad the other day, he was reminding me. I said, why was I? I was looking at Acorn with Daryl, his his track club. It's like, why was we look, why was, why were we looking to change? And he said, well, Mr. Pittman was about to leave because it was just too much. It was, you know, it's every, it's about what, at least three days a week, you traveling on the weekends. Like, you know, it's a lot, it is a lot that goes into it. So 
luckily he he stuck around. I didn't have. I to commend. Leave. I commend any youth coach, high school coach. I I did it for two years and it just was it, yeah. My, yeah, wife, was, lot, my wife was like, you go either going to coach or you going to be my husband. Like, oh, yeah, that's an easy wow. choice. <laughs> that's an easy choice. Wow. <laughs> and it's, and it's, and it's, I'm sure a lot of head coaches have that conversation. I'm yeah, pretty sure a lot it's, of it's head hard. coaches it's hard. have that conversation. If, you're, you know, if your spouse is not on, now the, the coach that my kids, their team, they are in it together. They both love it, you know, husband and wife. Right. But. Nah. I can only imagine, nah. you know, she, she supported me, came to the games really... and stuff, but she wasn't about to just be no gym rat. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the fact that my son plays helps me out, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be there anyway. Team. I got to yeah. be there anyway. And then I got a four-year-old. I'm going to have to be there anyway. But to do it, to say that I'm about to do it without no kids playing would be a, a constant nah. argument. That's a constant argument. And then I, I couldn't I mean, explain why I was at why I was at practice, but I wasn't at my daughter's practice. That was a tough one to explain. Ooh, to yeah. Oh yeah, oh, definitely. Yes. A couple couple questions before we let y'all go, right? Tasha, you posted the other day um, Logan track record, right? And you're high on them records still. How does that make you feel knowing that one? you're still like top two or three in every event you ran um, at, at Logan. How does that make you feel? Because sometimes you'd be like, these records we put up be meant to be broken. Or, mm-hmm. But we still be, you still in the top three in that. How does that make you feel? And I saw the names above you and I'm like, wow, that, that was a, the, she, she was fast too. Those were some heat too, right? How did that make you feel? It felt good. I mean, I think that, um, one thing that I that I try to do, I didn't keep up with a lot of my accolades. I didn't keep up with a lot of my rings, my uniform, stuff like that. So, you know, for the younger kids out there that are watching, like, take, appreciate that stuff. You know, when you win that stuff, you work hard for it. Um, it just, it, it just made me reminisce, you know, on the, on the competitions, the work that I put in. Um, and, also, what it made me realize looking at those lists is that I I started the 3M to Logan. Like, like it's a mm-hmm. list behind the, the, the me. Pipeline, of, the pipeline. The person right. ahead of me in the hurdles is from 3M, 3M after right. me, you know. Right. So I remember me and Dre, like we had a, you know, we, you know, our fitness business. One of the girls was from 3M to Logan to I think UCLA. I don't Mm. even know her, but that's what it really opened my eyes. I was like, dang, I was the, I was the first person to do this. That's dope. That's dope. (laughs) A while ago. That's dope. Y'all really good. You, the Craddocks, everybody was really, really, really good in in that pipeline, right? Dre, here go my question for you. It's two questions, right? And since we OAL based podcast, give me, if you had to pick your relay, from the times that you know of people that was in high school with you, I want you to pick your your three other guys for your four by one and your three other guys for your four by four. Wait, four. the times with me while, while I was in high school, same time? When you was in high school, yep. Yeah. You was in high school. Oh, all right. That's in the Bay Area. Uh, no, 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 no. OAL. That's in the no, OAL. OAL. Oh, in the OAL? OAL. OAL. A four by one. Uh... Smoke. Shout out my mean? pastor, man. Shout out my pastor, Smoke. Shout out, shout out, Smoke. Um, who else had a pun there? Uh, you, you'd have been I on both. Run, I didn't run track though. I didn't run track, so I don't. You I can't make your list. Oh, I didn't yeah. run track yeah, in high school. Run. Yeah, I don't All make your right. list. See, everybody else, everybody else is gone. I left. Smoke. Um, me. And then whoever the the people at Mac was, because Mac had everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you got um, who no. else you got? You got you got Tim. You got no. Tim. No, I wouldn't put Tim on there. Oh my god! You wouldn't put Tim on your relay list? <laughs> I'm my four by one. Oh, I mean, oh, but okay, Tim, okay. I'll put Lopez on there. I'll put Lopez on there. Oh, Aunt Lopez. Uh, I'll put what Lopez. about Lopez? Would you put I'll Chucky put on there? What about Chucky? Did he run four by ones with y'all? Did you run 100? Yeah, but Chucky came in the year after I left. Oh, he came after you. He came to Mac after I left. You talking about the year I was there, right? Yeah. The year I was there, Ryan Fernandez was faster. See, Tim was good, man. Let let me, I'm not going to ever hate on Tim. Tim was hella good. 
four by four, yes, all day long. Me and Tim, I would love to. 200, Tim, the 100, the four by one, I would put Tim on four by one. Let me stop lying. I put Tim on the four by one because you get Tim the stick, put him on second leg. He got to open it up. Tim go open it up. I just knew some dudes that was a little bit. I think Ryan was pressing oh, Tim. No, 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 no. Time out, time out, time Hold on, hold on. We, I'm not, we not as cool no more, but you still got Lawrence Parks that got to make a four by one somewhere. He's old be on there. No, no, no. We got five people. What's the definitive <laughs> four <laughs> by one I team? About Pizzo. I forgot about Pizzo. So I'm like, all right, so I forgot about Pizzo. So I will put Pizzo on there. For sure, I'll put Pizzo on there. I will put Pizzo on there. I will put Lopez on there. I will put um, Smoke on there. And yourself. And myself. And the only reason I don't put Tim on there is because I, I seen, I think, Tim got really got going like after like if he went on second leg, he got a lot more room to run. I would say Tim. Tim was hella fast, man. I think Tim 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 was fast, but I think the Lopez was faster, a hundred meter wide. And I think put him on a relay. I think that would have been a better relay. All right. Four well, about four. My, four by, yeah, four by four. I would have put me. I would have put uh Tim all day long on the four by four. I would have put uh J Webb on the four by four, and uh, Who Ryan Fernandez. Ryan Fernandez, got it, got it. Hey, this skyline has someone else. Maybe it was after you. Maybe he was after you. But here go my other question, right? Because. From the time that you know of people that ran for Skyline, whether it was the year before you with Jason Coop and Jay Charlotte and them, or the years that came after you with Gary Jones and Kenny O'Neill and them, right? They, they, they was rolling, right? Who Name your top four guys if you had to pick. I'm going to go race against Mac, top four guys of they all time. Who What Skyline guys are you taking with you? Oh, me, Kenny O'Neill, Gary, and uh, Jay Coop. And Jay Coop, four by one. Four by one. Four by one. Would That's they blazing. would they have would they have action at y'all? Yes. You know what I'm saying? You think you think Mac and Steel have beat you guys? From there off the four that I'm thinking, I'm thinking Jody, Phil and Charles. Jody. Um, yeah, they would have Tim Rashad, on their team still. Rashad have, Allen. They have Tim. Zoom. Would and you Moody. put but hold on, but we going four by one. Would you put Ed Lopez above Tim? See the thing is this, man. I've seen I I've seen Lopez can run. He can run. And him can run too. But you looking like you put you put them at their like where they'll be the strongest at. I think Tim would be the strongest either at uh, a second anchor. leg or an anchor. Second leg because he got more room to run, right? He got more room, he can he got more real estate to run on second leg. Lopez could probably run all, you know, put him on any leg he can run. That's why that's the only reason I said Lopez. But do I I think Tim is faster, but um just putting on a relay, if you got four other guys that can run too, then like, where would you put them at? So that's I'm just thinking of that that way. But um and they both can run fast. Do do do, do, do T Bird make any of the Mac relay teams? Four about four by four. Four by four? Spell T Bird, um Jody. <laughs> Tim Brown, and they had another guy. Hold on. Can't think of his name. Was it Otis Washington? One of them dudes was fast, too. But I'm glad T. Barry would have made it. I think four by four, by four they beat y'all. Four by one, y'all get them. Four by four, they would they would win. I'm not going to act like they that. Win. Four hey, by J- one. Jody, or Jody and Tim combo together, that was already a combo. That's like – that's – I think that's one of the deadliest two punches in OAL ever anyway. Like, mm. Joey to Tim, like, I don't think you've ever had another two combo on the same OAL team like that. Like, not recent. No, I don't think, I don't think you can name another. Like, you have, like, some, like, uh, Mira has some good people. Like, Logan have good two people. But for the OAL, Joey and Tim was that dynamic duel. I, we haven't seen that mm. since then. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Do you think, um, like, I think, like, Jay Coop. If Jay Coop ran a 400, he would have, because Jay Coop was a tall runner. He would have been hella fast if he ran a 400. I think in high school, though, we would have just stuck on running 100 and 200. Nobody really want to touch that 400. 100 and 200. 
because that 400 is like, who wants to run around the track? One time? I didn't know no it other races like, existed. It didn't show you which one. <laughs> the, the fastest was the 100, right? Yeah, did, one and two. When you Did Two Bob run track with y'all before we get out of here? Did he run track or just was football? Oh, he was baseball season. Two Bob was baseball. Was baseball. He, he had baseball. speed. He was supposed to run, but he didn't run. He didn't Absolutely. run. Not after that time, the whole school watched him get beat. <laughs> Nah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the crazy right. part is the crazy part we had to Bob on the show. He never brought that up. I bet he didn't. I'm gonna call him and ask him why he didn't bring that up. Hey, like, hey, hey Bob. What? Hey, 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 let me tell you why you don't bring that type of stuff up. The podcast is about telling your glory <laughs> story. <laughs> We're not talking about we never lose. I ain't get beat. I, I ain't get beat. I never drop the pass. Right? That is the podcast. Hey, uh, we want to thank y'all for coming on the podcast, absolutely. man, for our first episode of Track. And I thought about. It, I said I wouldn't do another episode of Track, but I want to hear Ryan Peters, right? Ryan Austin, Ryan Austin. I got to hear Ryan. Um, because she did win a state championship. I want to know all of the things that went into that race and how everything takes off. You win a state championship, everything takes off from you from there. That's like how you said, win the Olympics, everything after that, that follows, right? So I'm definitely um, want to talk to Ryan, but shout out to both of you guys for coming on and speaking with us. Right on, man. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for having Thank us, man. Fine. Thank Anytime. you. Y'all have a good day. All right. You got an SC hat? I wish I would have more. I told Tasha. Man, I was he was saying jacket. that he was gonna put his SC Letterman jacket on. <laughs> hey, hey, listen to me. So, hey, 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 I still got my Letterman jacket too, man. I love my Letterman jacket, right? Um, but I'm like you, Tasha. I lost my ring and everything, man. I lost everything. But yes. shout out to USC, man, because I knew and I and before I let y'all get out of here, my first time seeing Tasha at a Pac-10 meet. You know, and I'm like, got my Arizona State on, Tasha. And at the time, I didn't run track. Tasha didn't know I ran track. But seeing her at the meet, and I could have been, I don't know what meet it was at. It could have even been at Washington State. I think it was at Arizona. Oh, it could have been University of Arizona. And I'm seeing, so Ken, I used to just pop up at track meets in Arizona State gear. People be like, oh, bro, you go here. Like, (laughs) I'm running track, bro. This shit is kind of crazy right now. I remember I ran into BJ and Shamar the same kind of way. I was hella surprised. I was like, I was like, Tosh, don't say nothing. I'm about to just take eighth real quick in this 400. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but ah! thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for coming on, man. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. Appreciate you too. It, you too. All right. All right, y'all. Hey, shout out to Dre and Tasha, man. That Great was interview. Fun, man. Very that enlightening, man. Hey, I, the track interview is crazy, man. I, I love it. Hey, one of the things, though, man, for our audience, what we're trying to do, man, we're trying to help facilitate. Uh, OEL, um, I don't want to say alumni coaches podcast, but we're going to do a special OG coaches podcast where we have some of our OGs in the game that's coaching or that used to coach. Coach, you got to bring Coach Coach Zoe back on with Coach Edwards, my coach, Coach Pooh, who's still doing a fine job at Mac, and we got to bring the surprise guest on, Ken, Orlando Gray. We need Orlando uh. Gray on. And that, on that segment too, man. So we got to get Coach Gray to come on that segment and talk about the legacy of the OEL that me or you both do not know. We need, you know? Three, we need three hours. Three hours? Three hours. We can break that. <laughs> we got to break it in segments. Right? Hey, you know what, Ken? That could be the episode we do in person in yeah, June. That's if what we I'm can't thinking. facilitate it, do that in person uh, in, in, in June. That'll probably help better. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, some of the conversations we have offline, Get, get very comedic and it's like, oh no, we gotta have you all, man. We gotta have it. Y'all, yeah. listen, if y'all heard the conversations me and Ken have with people <laughs> and everything, y'all will be like, yo, how the fuck y'all doing a podcast? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, good thing we don't post or tweet everything. No, no, right? no, no, no. Hey, what's said, what's said to me stays we with can't, me. We don't, we don't post everything. So uh, all information is a good hand. But uh, one thing I would do, I would give anybody a platform to say what it is that they wanna that say. They wanna say that they want to say. If they have an audience that's willing to listen, they want to get to the youth, get to the adults, get to the coaches about any topic that they want to discuss, we would definitely facilitate those type of conversations. Absolutely. So, thanks absolutely. to our viewers for tuning in, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a wrap. We want to thank our guests, Natasha Sawyer and Andre Ammons for coming on. Man, thank you guys for tuning in to the Rec Center. I'm Kenny Edwards for Lorenzo Farham. We out.